and I'll just cover it in. Just do your close-ups there. this in there, Phil, that, it's kind of hard to see here, but that's actually, yep. okay, good. We'll do that during the operation. Then. Okay. Well, what we have here is an Iceman windings tester, as it's called. It really is the same as what we, the popularity of what was called just a coil tester by its name. But really what there are, what this does, or any kind of a tester like this, is actually testing the coil's secondary winding. And uh, I like these units a lot better, it, even if it's old, you know, as old as it is. The function of it is, is it's duplicating exactly what's happening on most motors, whether they're two cycle or four cycle, and that is, it's you're introducing the voltage which is DC by its own battery, then, as you would either an automobile or any one of the cycles that are used. The plug-ins and back. This side over here is uh, the battery plug-in side, uh, and the other one that isn't really original is the AC in here. All the rest of the wiring you see, the case and all the, uh, the manuals for it, the writings and all that stuff, it's, all, it's really all original. So as you can see, it's really called a magneto winding testing data. And what they mean by that, when you open it up, we can pick out one here where it says WICO. And you'll see here where it's the amp amperage as it's uh, the core is reading, and so the most amperage that this will handle, and it's only because of these type of coils, is actually from like one and a half to about three three amps. That's all you have, and the voltage that we're introducing here is really a DC six volt, but that's only based for testing. The actuality of these coils when they're being used is really produced through the coil magnets flux, which is probably about 4 volts. So as you see here, we just scan that through here, we see the American Bosch, and then the listings through here of what coils are, uh, they will, they're being tested. And then the, for the, they'll have the maximum amperage, like you see here, 1.35, and then it goes all the way up, I believe, to uh, 3, or 295. So they handle the Apollo and the Berlin and Briggs and Stratton, the K and W, Scintilla, and Bosch, of course, as you saw. And it's the Wyco, Fairbank Morris, and um, Splitdorf. In the backside, more popular here. You see the Evan Roods, although uh, you have, well, here he is, Johnson Motor Wheel, and Johnson Outboard are in this, plus the Harvester in the case uh, that you're familiar with, Kohler, and then Robert Bosch. So that's that part. Then the, uh, well, like I said, the tester itself is all original, including this diagram describing kind of what it is. It also has a listing of the coils, uh, armatures that it handles, or the winding um, voltage plus the amperage that it handles, uh, giving all the, the instructions for it. Um, and then the, as I described you back as far as the voltage that's introduced to this, we do it with a battery, but in actuality, the magneto, when it, or the engine that's being used with the magneto flywheel, really pushes, pushes about three to four volts maximum. So then the amperage, of course, only goes up to about three, three amps. Then when you go into testing here, we have where you can introduce the condenser in itself, which most of the time that's what you'll use, so you'll put that on. And then left and right is showing the spark gap that the coil that's being tested is able to produce, and it should jump that gap, which is here. It's about they call it five millimeter, but it really is like about three sixteenths is the maximum, or that's what I use. Then um, the, going back to the instructions here, there's a left and right for the spark. So this one be on the left, that hooks on to then the one side on a single coil hooks on the one side 
of the uh, coil winding. The other side is really grounded on a single and that's what we're doing here is picking up that ground but also the secondary is grounded and what we're picking up here is really the primary well, uh, it's coil winding which is right under but not attached to the secondary. So what is attached to it now would be the secondary winding and that's what we're introducing through here six volts but we're doing that with the open enclosures through the points that are in the back that's driven by the 110 volt AC motor. Then you jump down here and we have the rheostat where we can increase and decrease the amperage that we needed for what uh, the coil is capable of handling. And then uh, of course the ground is self-explanatory. Uh, then the breaker, that's the part that goes into the um, primary winding. And then the ground, of course, this is the ground part. And you can use either one. You can jump from one side to the other. So right now, we'll turn it on. We'll only be actually testing the single winding uh, coil for a single cylinder. So we turn it on to the motor, which is AC. And we turn it on to the voltage. And turn up the average to 2.5. This is a scintilla coil, or no, a Wanko coil. That's on the left is showing the spark jumping like that, and that's what it should be. If we take the condenser out, you can see that it it's actually it shows no operation, but almost like an open. So we have the condenser, when you put the condenser in, the condenser actually, actually acts like a tank to hold that amount of voltage in it and release. And open and open. So we put that part down, turn it off. Then we'll put in a, uh, a dual uh, winding coil, so that it's capable of handling two cylinders. So we'll hook um, the breaker up to the one side of the primary, and then we'll hook the ground side at the other side of that primary. And this is the high tension output, so we'll put on the left side on. That'll show that's, that's where your spark will be coming from. We'll turn the motor on, the AC. understand that but that's really what a coil secondary is about so there's two windings in a coil basically you have the primary that's the one that picks up the magnetic flux and when you're testing with a battery that's the one that induces a voltage to it then uh, the secondary part of it is only wound around but not attached to it or grounded to it off, uh, at first is a secondary winding and that's the one that fires your spark plug that's the secondary winding so in a single one side is grounded and the other side is open and that, of course, goes to your plug. On a dual, the one winding, both windings uh, are, uh, are open one to, each, one to each of the plugs. So therefore, you really are not grounding one side. If you were to grind, ground, let's see, um, I can duplicate that. We'll turn it back on. Now we have no fire. 
But if I did this, we would. So what's the same as grounding one side of that open in the second one? I'm not sure I can do that. I'm sure I there. Now we have the one side so we're actually grounding really, but um, you see the spark jump there, it's the same thing as grounding, it's gotta find a place to go through. And in this case it does. So then our our uh, secondary then our secondary is open now. Then in the coil, that winding always has to be around a core. And that core, of course, has got to be, it's basically a soft metal. And uh, when they're put together, that is really your, what they call an E-frame. And when they're sandwiched together like that, uh, they are insulated somewhat. That's, that isn't to say they're putting paper between each uh, lamination, but it's the physical property of the uh, soft uh, metal that there is there when they stamp these out. So really, you really can't have any, or not supposed to have any grounding between each of the segments or the the, um, the uh, E-frame and segments in themselves. They've got to be separated. And that's only because there they're picking up the magnetic flux from the flywheel or the magnets. And uh, that's about it. <laughs>